It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of February 11th, 2005. Once again, only two movies, but unlike last week, we actually have two movies that are decent. Decent movies. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily great, but they're certainly a lot better than Boogeyman and The Wedding Day, that's for damn sure. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about those two movies. Let's start with the biggest new release of the weekend, and of course that one is Will Smith in the romantic comedy Hitch. So in Hitch, Will Smith plays Alex Hitch Hitchens, a professional date doctor who makes a living teaching men how to woo women. Unfortunately, while helping his latest client, played by Kevin James, woo the woman of his dreams, he finds out that his game does not work on the gossip colonist, played by Ava Mendes, from whom he is smitten. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, the movie is really good. It's a very entertaining film. Will Smith is very funny in the movie. The cast overall is great. The Eva Mendez, Amber Valletta, I think is very good here. And probably the biggest star of the whole movie that I think really t stole the show is this guy. See, a movie like this makes you remember that Kevin James was a is is a very funny comedian. And I mean, I mean, he he's on the King of Queens. He was on the King of Queens at that time, and he proved that. He's got a lot of charisma to him. He's got a lot of comedic charisma to him. And in this case, yeah, he's very good in the movie. He really does steal the show. He's the big breakout star of the movie, at least in my opinion, because I think he really has to, he's, you know, he has to compete. So, uh, he has to work alongside Will Smith. I mean, Will Smith works in comedy very well, but, you know, you pair him up with Kevin James. Kevin James, I mean, he does a very good job of working with him in general. And it just goes to show you that, you know, Kevin James can be very funny when he's not involved with Adam Sandler's company or group of people where they just basically reduce him down to just being trying to be the next Chris Farley, which I like Kevin James, but he's no Chris Farley. Nobody will ever be better than Chris Farley was, even as, as much as they try. Not to say that I hate Kevin James in general. I just hate that every time I see him in something and I think, you know, you've got a lot of great tr talent, man. You've been, I've seen you in so many movies and shows where you're very funny. And then you reduce yourself to starring in Adam Sandler's movies, really bad Adam Sandler movies, too. To. Plus, man, I mean, he's pretty much Fred Flintstone. I mean, he should... This is the guy that should have been Fred Flintstone in Reaper Rock Vegas, because, you know, he gets Leo Remini in King of Queens, and he gets Amber Valletta in this movie. I mean, the guy has a lot of charisma, and he makes it work. Like, he makes it work very well. Like, like if Will Smith isn't the biggest draw of this movie to me, it's Kevin James. I think he's very funny in this movie. I think it shows a lot of the true potential that Kevin James had back in the day before he eventually got sucked into the Adam Sandler whirlpool, uh, starring in really bad comedies with them. But um, like I said, I still think Kevin James is funny, but not as – but yeah. When he stars in those type of films like with, with Adam Sandler's name under them, it just kind of reduces talents down a lot to just being the comedic fat guy. And no, he's more than that. Like, in this movie definitely shows that. I mean, I've seen him in a lot of other movies where he's proven he's got a lot of ch charisma and he's a very good actor. But yeah. As far as the film itself goes, it's fine for what it is. The story overall is pretty generic. It does fall into predictable rom-com territory. But unlike something like The Wedding Date, where we talked about in the last episode, if you can make it work and make it charming and, fu and fun to watch, it could be really good in the long run. And I think in here, it works very well. I think it works just enough to say that, okay, I buy into it. I'm willing to go along with it for the long haul, and I think most people did at the same time at around this time too, because the film was a big hit with critics. It was a huge box office hit. It was actually one of the ten highest grossing films of 2005. So there was a lot there. I mean, there's a lot there to admire about this movie in general. It's a really good film. Um, very, it's very predictable, very formulaic at times. But you know what? It works well enough to recommend it. I do recommend it very much. There's a reason why it's still playing on television over 20 years later on TV. Like you see it a lot on Freeform, you see it a lot on FX, TBS, all those networks. Like it's a movie that has ha held up very well over the last couple of years. It's a very funny movie. I can't recommend it enough. Hitch. So, um, so with that said, let's go ahead and move on to our last movie that we have here, and that is Who's Heffing Up Movie. I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong with Winnie the Pooh. I mean, you know, these movies that these movies that came out in the 2000s may have not been great films in general. I mean, probably the best one overall is the Tigger movie, but they're fun, comfort food movies. I mean, then again, most of the Winnie the Pooh stuff in general is like Winnie the Pooh. Kind of has fall, kind of falls in the same category as the Peanuts movies. You know, the Peanuts characters in general, like they, they don't really step out of their step out of their time. There's their timelessness, and then when they do, it does work very well. Like, it, the only time Winnie the Pooh's ever done that was with Christopher Robin, the live-action CG movie, which works for the, which is, which is a good movie, and, um, but, 
and the, and here's another example of simplicity making it work as well as it can with this movie here, Pooh's Heffalump movie, where you, basically you have the story of, you know, it's a quiet day in the Hundred Acre Wood, and it quickly grows mysterious when a strange sound echoes through the trees, a sound that can only be one thing, a heffalump. No woozles are mentioned in this movie, or seen or seen in this movie. They, they're mentioned a couple of times, but not as much as the heffalumps are. When the friends devise, Roo sets off into the wood and discovers a heffalump named Lumpy. To Roo's great surprise, heffalumps are quite friendly and playful. And after meeting Lumpy, Roo wonders why the others are so frightened by him and why Luke Lumpy is so afraid of Roo's friends. And upon discovering their new friendship, Roo and Lumpy's loved ones realize that heffalumps are nothing to fear at. And filled with humor, heart, and heffalumps, the warm and wonderful adventure is quite fun for the entire family. You can see that this synopsis is clearly written by Disney. But, yeah, it gives you the basic crux of the whole storyline in general here. And you know what? It works. It's fun for what it is, because it is. It's the one that goes back to taking the Winnie the Pooh movies to a more simpler approach, you know? Unlike the past couple of movies where they have to throw in this massive third act, third act actions, random action sequence, like like in the last movie where, you know, uh, Pooh and Piggler are going to fall off of this log, and it just feel, and or in the first movie where Tigger and Rue are falling off this mountain, and it's just like, no, that doesn't really work as well as something like, you know, Pooh's Grand Adventure, which works very well on that front, because of what they were trying to do, because of what they were trying to, because that's a bigger adventure for them, and it's just, it just works better on there when it does, when it, in the Tigger movie or Piglet's big movie, but here, it's a much simpler approach, the storyline is nothing too grand or too amazing, but it's a very interesting idea, it's a clear, it's a clear, a movie that's clearly meant to be for little kids, and adults can still get enjoyment out of it, and it does a good job of kind of expanding on the idea of Heffalumps and Woozles, uh, not just, I keep saying that I keep saying the Evelyn's rules because I'm thinking of the, the song from the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. But no, it gives you a new perspective on Heffalumps. Like it doesn't change the the whole idea of Heffalumps and just completely ruins what you've been told about them already. There's just the whole idea is that you know they've talked about Heffalumps for so long, they really don't have any idea of what Heffalumps are really like. And here you have a movie where you have a friendly Heffalump and you see that hey, they're all not as bad as we give as you give them credit for. And you know what? That's a really good. That's really. That's a really good thing to teach kids. You know, don't judge. Is don't judge book. Don't judge a book by its cover. Pretty much that. And yeah, like I said, kids will really enjoy this. Adults can really enjoy it too, especially the ones who love Winnie the Pooh. The animation still looks really good, and pre it's still pretty decent for a film on a big screen. Like, it's funny because as I'm recording this today, the War of the Rings, the War of the Rohan trailer just came out, which looks really cool. It's a really cool looking Lord of the Rings anime, anime animated film, so I'm really curious to check that out. But it's going to theaters, and I was I was really conflicted on how I thought about that because, you know, the movie the movie could be really really good, but and it could look pretty good on the big screen. But I was watching that trailer, and all I could think to myself is. Nothing about this trailer really screams out big screen theatrical a animated film, like a movie like this. But then again, you have a movie like this that doesn't really scream out a big theatrical style adventure, and yet it's still fun to watch on the big screen. So maybe I'll, maybe I f I'll feel the same way about that movie in particular, but we'll come to that road when we come to that one when that comes out at the end of the year. But um, but the animation overall in here is very good. There are not a nice uh, uh, a toy boat. <laughs> and there are a lot of nice songs here done by Carly Simon, and overall, it's what you'd expect from a good Winnie the Pooh movie. Kids, I think, will really enjoy it. The adults will enjoy it as well. It fits right up there with some of the best of the Winnie the Pooh movies. Just good fun all around. I can't recommend this one enough. Really good time overall. Okay, maybe I've over-exaggerated this week. Not this week being not as good of a week as I thought it was, but. We looked at two pretty good movies, and like I said, certainly better than what we looked at last time around, but next time we meet, we'll take a look at four movies, all of which have intriguing, interesting bits of history to them. We've got Keanu Reeves starring in Constantine, of course he's playing John Constantine in that movie, uh, Anna Sophia Robb in Because of Wind Dixie, uh, The Infamous Son of the Mask, and also Downfall, which is known for having one of the most memorable memes of recent memories, but um, we'll take a look at those four movies next time around, and... Uh, I'll have to say this, it won't be as good of a week as this week was, but uh, until then, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So, with that said, I am off, I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.